or the Attorney General's office has been battling a crisis that threatens the very integrity of the office. Tonight, we're hearing from the office, which is also the Ministry for Justice, as they issue a passionate appeal for public support in the face of the scandal. The AG, Godfrey Yabu Adame, is facing accusations of witness tampering following a leaked audio that was published by the main opposition NDC, in which he is heard on a call asking a defendant in a case he is prosecuting to do his bidding and falsely secure documentation to have the case adjourned and testify in manner that will secure the conviction of the minority leader. His deputy, Alfred Tuyayabua, has been speaking on the sidelines of the launch of Amnesty International's Human Rights and Death Penalty Report 2023. We'll hear from him shortly, but first, here is what the NDC put out as a recording of an alleged conversation between the AG and the third accused in the ongoing trial of Dr. KCL after forcing businessman Richard Jackba. Let me try for that. Let me that's my timetable for, for the rest of the uh, Oh, that means that you are not going to be around. So, yeah. And then even next week, the whole of next week, I'll not be around. Um, it is a way of, <laughs> if you will not even finish next week, um, I would appreciate it. Oh, no, no, okay, no, no I'll, not, I'll, I'll not finish next week. I don't think I'll be able to finish because the documents are many. So you will surely go and come and meet, and meet me. Oh, no, but that will, also depend upon, that will also depend upon the judge's but behavior. I can bring one a medical experience next week. Okay. Okay, fine. If you bring a medical excuse, let's right. I think you. I have to bring a medical excuse. Ah, no, you are saying that I should bring a medical excuse next week. Yeah, you can, you can if you want. Ah, but brother, you want this woman to issue bench warrant for me again? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, following this revelation, the NDC is calling for the sack of the Attorney General. It is clear from the tape recording that Godfrey Dame was communicating with the third accused Richard Jackpa on the blind side of his lawyer as well as the court. And he was attempting to compromise Jackpa in order to wrongfully convict Dr. Atufosin. This is a cardinal sin against the legal profession. Considering the scandalous nature of this recording, and other forms of evidence we have shown you, we wish to make the following pressing demands as part of efforts to restore credibility to the Attorney General's office and Ghana's judicial system as a whole. One, the immediate and unconditional resignation or dismissal of Godfrey Dame for bringing the high office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice into disrepute and public opprobrium. Clearly, Mr. Dami is not fit to hold himself out as Attorney General Minister of Justice. He is unfit to be the leader of the Ghana Bar. Two, the immediate prosecution of Godfrey Dami for multiple violations of the laws of Ghana. We wish to make it clear that should President Akufuado refuse or fail to prosecute him, a future NDC government will prosecute Godfrey yeah. Dami for this heinous crime of fabrication of evidence. Three, commencement of disciplinary proceedings by the General Legal Council against Godfrey Dami and his disbarment for conduct on becoming of a lawyer, and more importantly, the leader of the Ghana Bar. Four, a publicly televised parliamentary inquiry into this and other reports of judicial manipulations by Godfrey Dame with a view to censor Godfrey Dame to prevent the recurrence of such judicial manipulations. But the Deputy Attorney General, Godfrey Tria Yabua, is rebuffing NDC's claims and demands. Now, uh, he spoke to, to journalists at the launch of Amnesty International's Human Rights and Death Penalty Report 2023. It is not confirmed whether what we have is an authentic audio. It's not confirmed. That's the first thing. 
And the second thing is that the Attorney General is very resolute, very firm, very healthy, undertaking his duties as an Attorney General. He's currently out of jurisdiction and very soon he'll be back to continue his duties as an Attorney General of the Republic. Oh, we are in court. And cases of this nature are fought in court. We have closed our case in that matter. The first accused person has cl closed his case. The, second, the third accused person is in the witness stand and are going examination. So that's where our focus is. The NDC wants him to resign or recuse himself. What do you, what do you say to that? There is no basis, my brother. But do you think the, the, or the, audio will the audios have, if there are any, have nothing to do with what we are doing in court. Mm -hmm. And the judge yesterday made it known to all of us that what we are doing in court, different from what we are doing in the public space, that's political. Mm -hmm. Our focus is to do what we are supposed to do in court mm -hmm. for it to get to the end of this matter. You, you've indicated that you are yet to authenticate that audio recording, but really, did your boss ever have any conversation via telephone with the third accused? It is not in doubt. We issued a statement within the week. You've heard our spokesperson, very true. Circumstance that led to that kind of conversation. And then we think nothing on toward was said, as, as I speak now. We should all stay committed to the cause of the Republic. We must make sure that we protect the public best. It matters not who is involved. If there's anything on toward, we must make sure that we support the prosecutors to come to conclusion on matters before the court. Because we represent the Republic, we represent you. Over 34 million Ghanaians, it's not our own representation. So we only need your, your support and nothing else. So that was the Deputy Attorney General Alfred Tia Yeboate. Well, this is the top story brought to you by Telesel. Let's get into the matters and, and bring in Professor Kojoa PJ Etia. He's Associate Professor for the School of Law, University of Ghana. Prof, I'm grateful to you for joining. Now, does these or do these allegations of witness tampering by the Attorney General affect the substantive matter in any way? Thank you for having me. Hello. Hi, Prof. We can hear you. Yes. Can, I, can you repeat the question, please? So, I, I'm, I'm trying to find out from you how these allegations of witness tampering by the Attorney General affect yeah. the substantive matter he was prosecuting, or he is prosecuting in court. Well, it depends on how the judge makes a ruling on that. I think you have already made a point that the judge was asked to take notice of the fact that there was an attempt by the Attorney General to influence the outcome of the case in a way that will make the prosecution case look better against the first accused person. And so in such a case, what is clear is that with regard to the plea bargaining issue, I think we can say it's dead in the water because it has been um, stamped with in, in one way or the other. With regard to the substantive case, the judge at this point cannot rely on information that is in the public domain. That is something that is considered as, um, if you like, hearsay evidence. But where she feels that the outcome of the case may be jeopardized or the justice will not be served if that particular issue involving the Attorney General is not gone into, then she would make that decision. So at this point, we don't know yet where his discretion is. But what is clear on the face of the law is that the proceeding is going to take place and proceed as if nothing has happened. But, but, but how, how does that, uh, you know, uh, or how will the AG put behind what is happening in the public space and genuinely prosecute this matter to get, to get justice in court for, for the state and, and for parties involved? Well, that is why we are making the point that the case has been 
uh, compromise one way or the other because the attorney general, based on the evidence we have, based on the the, the reports that was issued yesterday regarding the the information that he may have communicated with uh, Mr. Jaffa, the credibility of the attorney general's office has been compromised. And therefore, the case is prosecuting is also seems to have been tainted. So uh, the normal thing is for him to resign so that the, some credibility will be brought to his office and uh, the issues surrounding the, the credibility of the particular kind of allegations being leveled against the, attend, um, the first accused in particular will sort of help to clear some of the misconceptions and the, the, the image tarnishing that has been associated with the case so that it can go smoothly and when justice is delivered or judgment is delivered, everybody can see that justice has been served. But as it is now, the, the court of public opinion seems to say that the case has been tainted. And so when the judgment is given and it should go against the accused person, people are likely to say that justice has not been served. It is, it is also in this context that the, just, the, 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 the justice is trying to be sure that the case that is before her is what she is looking at, but she is not looking at anything else that is happening outside the courtroom. So she has made that clear, and that is for how the judge should deal with the matter. So it depends on the outcome of the case and how the judge, in her discretion, will at the point determine if the information that has come to her from outside and also what the third party in the case has indicated to to the court and which has been put on record may be revisited and for any further issues that the judge may decide to delve into to be able to clear that kind of um, mess, if you like, and to make the, uh, the, the justice be served at the end of the day. Well, but, but tonight we're hearing from the Deputy Attorney General that the, there is no indication that the AG will resign. Uh, you know, uh, you, you and other people have called for, for the AG to, to resign or be sacked, but we are told that he won't. Well, that, that is very unfortunate, but it's not unexpected. It is not unexpected because it is, has happened over and over again. And the second option may also not be respected. So at the end of the day, what the Attorney General is doing and the Office of the Attorney General is doing is simply to make things look... Um, it's as if we are, we are not serious for our justice system. And we just want to do some legalese and say that this is how things should go. And so it is a very unfortunate development. What is, has happened so far, it seems to be clear that some witness tampering has taken place. Some attempts have been made to compromise the delivery of justice. Efforts have been made to gather information, to, to nail somebody for a crime that maybe he may not have been committed, or even if he committed it at all, they don't have enough evidence to prosecute him. So the way that they are doing is as if they want to go all, all, by all means to make sure that this person um, is found guilty. And therefore it becomes, it raises a question as to the motive for prosecuting the case in the first place. Under normal circumstance, the Attorney General should have resigned and somebody, there are definitely people who are qualified enough, even the Deputy Attorney General can take over, so that it will bring some credibility to the case the Attorney General is handling the case. But as it is now, even, uh, even if the uh, plea bargaining issue is off the table. The, the substantive issue and how it is proceeded in the normal way is, uh, is also raising a number of questions. And that is our concern, that okay. justice is not being served in this way. Mm. The judge mm. may try to do her best to ensure that things are streamlined. But in the mind of the people, something wrong has happened somewhere. And therefore, justice may not be served at the end of the day. When, when the company agreed to, uh, to, the, I mean, to pay the money and the AG decided that 
he won't uh, accept that. Did he do a disservice to the country by that decision? That, that is the, one of the main purposes of plea bargaining is to ensure that at the end of the day, you are able to cut down on the procedures that are involved in the normal uh, prosecution of a case. And at the end of the day, you also want to ensure that in this time and age, when we're talking about criminal justice, one of the reasons or one of the objectives of criminal law is not necessarily to put the person behind bars. It is also to do restoration to be able to look at the interests of the victim and see whether it, if the case involved some uh, money stolen or any other way involving recovery of properties, if that is possible, that should be taken into account. So depending on how much the state is able to recoup from the case, that may also be a basis to engage in um, um, uh, plea bargaining to reduce the sentence of the accused. And so in this situation, the amount that was put on the table was huge. It is about 90% of the, um, the cost that the state has incurred as a result of this ambulance saga. So for the attorney general not to have accepted it also raises a question as to the motive for why he wants to prosecute the case. And in, in some cases, we can even say that the attorney general could be uh, tried or could be found uh, there, there's um, an uh, opportunity for the case of causing financial loss to the state because that is why we have the plea bargaining uh, thing in place that you're able to recover some money for the state and if that is uh, on the table and the attorney general refuses it for whatever reason he is supposed to represent the state he is the legal advisor for the state legal advisor for the president and he is supposed to have the law in his bosom to know the right thing to do. And so with all the surrounding circumstances, if this is an opportunity for him to make the plea bargaining process work and he decides to ignore it, or overlook it, the question is what is his motive? And if we should lose this amount of money, then he has caused financial loss to the state. Oh, wow. So he too has caused financial loss to the state by this action? I would say so. So long as it is proven that indeed there is a blue seal or whatever that the name of the company said we want to pay this money, then then he refuses. Then the question is why did he introduce a plea bargaining thing at all? And does he also understand and applying the the contemporary principles of uh, criminal justice, whereby restoration is a means to deal with such situations which links up with uh, plea bargaining? He has not relied on that. He has not um, used that opportunity to save some money for the state. Okay. So at the only day, he's just going to court every day, wasting time and money, which could have been used to deal with other uh, pressing cases. All right. And then you save the money for the state, and you, you cut down the process. Prof, I'm grateful to you. Professor Kwajo APJ Etia is Associate Professor um, at the School of Law, University of Ghana. Let me bring in the uh, national organizer of the MPP. He is also a lawyer, uh, Henry Nana Boache. I'm grateful to you for joining. Now, uh, thank you. Won't it help matters for the Attorney General to simply recuse himself and allow due process to take its course in this matter if he believes he's innocent of all of these allegations? Um... The Attorney General will not resign today. He will not resign tomorrow. He will not resign the day after. And I think you asked a wrong question and a wrong answer was given. Look, when Big C um, suggested by way of plea bargain or plea negotiation to pay the money, first of all, Big C is not a party to the matter in court. In fact, that is what Attorney General never said the state was not going to accept the $2 million offer. What Attorney General said was that the conditions are not acceptable. What are the conditions? Big C already, it's a company in Dubai. Already there are contentious matters as to whether the contract between the state and Big C sought parliamentary approval. Secondly, Big C is not a party to the matter before the law court. So when you ask a question like, 
did the attorney general do us good by not accepting the money? I mean, okay. you have asked a wrong question. Okay. Mm, mm. So the fact of the matter is that attorney general responded because the lawyer for the third accused, Japa, brought this request by way of plea bargain. And attorney general said that the conditions were not favorable because Big C, that company, is not a party to the suit. It's not a party to well, the well, ongoing well, 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 but Henry, discussion. Henry, you're prosecuting the, the parties in this case because of an amount that you say that the Good. nation so lost. I was, I was going to go and, there. And now the so company says, I want, I want to pay. There. Let me mm -hmm. progress there. So what the attorney general said was that, look, you are the parties involved. If you want to tell us that you are coming by way of plea bargain and you are going to mobilize these monies, fair enough. Because if Attorney General should accept such an offer from a party that is not, or an entity that is not a party to the suit, if at the end of the day we agree to let the whole discontinue the matter, where are you going to see the um, big C? Because they are not a party to the suit. So I think you now said that. Then you, the accused, you need to come properly. The attorney general must identify you as the parties coming forward for the plea bargain. Attorney general wrote to Atuforsen. And Atuforsen said that he has no objection to the plea bargain. Then attorney general wanted to see clarification and asked whether you are by way associating yourself to this request by way of plea bargain. Atuforsen said no, because you know why. Smartly, he thinks that when he accepts it, it is an admission of guilt. It's an admission of wrongdoing. So I think the good professor you just spoke to should probably get the documents and read. Because if he carries this same submission elsewhere, he will be polluting the minds of people. But, but, but Harry, I mean... Attorney, the, uh, attorney General I, 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 never Harry, Harry the, the, the party to this matter, uh, I mean the third accused, who is Jack Pa, is a rep of the company. So, yes, I ag agreed that they are not a party to this matter in court. But a rep of that same company is, uh, is on, and the company says, whilst you are prosecuting the man for this amount, we are willing to bring it to the state. We are willing to pay. And you say you, you, don't, you don't want it. No, you see, you don't. Uh, Japa, at the time the offered, he was not even an agent again. He was not. They had disengaged him. So if anybody writes a letter, when the person, how will you even authenticate that, yes, this is even coming from Big C? Because you know what? It was the, um, um, the lawyer for Japa who even brought this request by way of um, a plea bargain. So how can you even authenticate that it is really coming there? And how are we also able to assess that they have the capacity to pay 2 million euros? So it is not that simple. So please don't fall for this propaganda from the NDC. Look, and this... Um, ambulance that came, it was so rotten. Alexei Bevia wrote a letter saying that it was not fit for purpose. And these ambulances were there. In fact, NDC were in power 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. They never accepted these ambulances. So, how can you blame MBV government for that? Look, there are clear cases of financial loss which are to force him as answer. And this whole shenanigan, this whole uh, trying to blow the thing into the public domain and then trying to turn the thing as if Attorney General has done something wrong, there is a clear case for uh, to force him to answer. You were the Deputy Finance Minister. You wrote some letters to Bank of Ghana authorizing them for payment, contrary to the terms and conditions of the agreement. These ambulances what? came. In fact, mm. we we're not even supposed to pay a penny. Okay. The ambulances were supposed to come in. We assess them. We do proper examination by National Ambulance Service, by Ministry of Health, before it come, before we be effect payment. Well, Harry, you I, make I, payment, I, 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 and I, I, then later on, do you know, do, do know the interesting mm. thing? You also three days, four days after, you write to control an accountant general that they should also effect payment for the charges involved in the bank uh, bank transactions regarding the establishment of the LCs. Okay. But, but Harry, um, in the statement by the AG itself last week, paragraph 3, it says, it is rather the third accused who, by various letters dated 27th April 2023, 16th May 2023, 
30th May 2023 and 12th June 2023, has proposed to the Republic through the Attorney General to engage in plea bargaining or plea negotiations. This plea bargaining proposal has to date not been accepted by the Attorney General. So it is it is Richard Jackpa who said, I am ready to accept and pay this money and so that we can we can deal with this matter. I mean, it is not Richard Jackpa. I have the letters before me. I can furnish you with these letters. But this is the Attorney General's statement, not 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 uh, no, Jackpa's but, but statement. That statement does not fit. Richard Jackpa cannot because yes, he through his lawyers, mm. I mean, writing for Big C. So it is Richard Japa who probably engaged this big C people. And then they said that they wanted to pay 2 million euros. Exactly. And then come and So, Henry, the question is that if a party in this case has written to you that I want to pay, however means he wants to, why don't you accept the money for which you are prosecuting the people? And you, then don't, then... you still don't get it. How can anybody just by way of letter write to you and say that I'm going to pay and then you accept it? You think it is that simple? Doesn't the law, that somebody, that, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't the law allow that, it? You know what? Discontinue. Henry, doesn't the law allow that option? You, you, you still don't get my point. AG never said that he was not going to entertain plea bargaining or plea negotiation. Never. AG is saying that the conditions are not favorable. I will not accept the conditions. What are the conditions? Why should Big C, entity that is not a party to the whole matter in court, propose to pay 2 million euros, discontinue, in fact, he said that 500,000, then later they'll pay 1.5 million, 500, you discontinue the matter, then we bring, um, after six months or so, then we pay uh, 1.5 million. I have the letters, I can write to you. So the conditions were not favorable. Okay, okay, Henry, I, I, I get your point, but there are several calls for investigations. I mean, some propose a parliamentary probe, some say the General Legal Council should go into it. And, and we are even hearing that there must be a public you know, inquiry open to the general public. Do you support such course that this could probably help solve the, the issue? I do not support such course. Why should we be wasting our time on such concocted, manipulated, heavily cut and pieced together tape? Why? In fact, in, in their own press conference, even the, 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 the screenshot of the WhatsApp messages the exhibited. I have the original one. Okay. The original one says that I am Richard Japa. I am the brother of Justice Yoni Kolende. Um, can I please have a, a private meeting with you? Then the AG responds, I will arrange through your brother, who is a respected, a revered Supreme Court judge. And then they had to cut off all those parts. And then create an impression as if it is attorney general that is asking okay. for the meeting. What kind of behavior is that? Right, and then they also, again, mm. in the same WhatsApp message, mm. they indicated that it was this WhatsApp, they spoke for 26 minutes. Henry, I'm grateful. So 26 um, minutes, mm. and then they played a tape of 60 minutes, Henry, I'm, and then I'm you want us to just... I'm, I'm what, grateful that you, 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 could join us, you could join us to explain issues. Uh, let, let me just wrap with uh, Sami Jain, who is the NDC's National Communication Officer. Sami, so if you think that these allegations could help you make a case of witch hunting against, against uh, Dr. Forson, why are you calling for him on him to resign? I don't understand the question, but could you, first of all, you've kept me on the line for... Uh, uh, a lot of time and so um i think apologies, apologies. clarify your question and give me time to so so to i'm asking that i mean answer. you want an at the ag to resign for engaging richard jackpot which is against the law and i'm asking if this could help you make a case in court against him for for which hunting which has been something that you've been standing uh, uh, on for quite no, some no, time there is nothing like making a case of witch hunting against mm -hmm. a prosecutor okay um uh, when we when the courts um um, reconvenes next week Tuesday. Um, you're going to hear counsel for Dr. Atufosin move an application um, under the inherent uh, jurisdiction of the court for an order of inquiry by the court into that into this matter. And we will wait uh, to see how that plays out in court. But uh, the Attorney General is a public officer who has sworn an oath. To, to serve not only as an attorney general but a minister of justice and to do to be fair to all manner of persons. Now he is also a lawyer and therefore he is governed by LI 2423, the rules of ethics that govern the legal profession. He has engaged in conduct on becoming of a lawyer, conduct on becoming of a prosecutor, and conduct that constitutes a crime. 
Specifically, I'm talking about the fabrication of evidence, which per Section 213 and 214 of the Criminal and Other Offenses Act of Ghana constitutes a second-degree felony, the offense of perjury. And so we are saying that without prejudice to the case of the state against Honorable Atto Forsen, this dishonorable attorney general must face the music of accountability. He must resign or be sacked immediately and go through disciplinary proceedings, okay, at the General Legal Council, like it is done to all lawyers who breach our rules of ethics. We are also saying that the state should prosecute him for engaging in crime because you heard him on tape telling a witness to forge a medical excuse duty when he knew that the, the, the witness was healthy and fit just to deceive a court. This is despicable, it is reprehensible, it is criminal, and we can't have such a criminal-minded person in, in, in being the leader of the Ghana Bar. It's a disgrace of monumental proportion. So we say that if the president doesn't sack him, parliament will censure him. If they don't prosecute him, the next NDC government will prosecute him. If the General Legal Council will not take judicial notice of this and institute disciplinary proceedings against him, we are ready to petition and trigger that process. And in court, Honorable Atto Forsen has certain rights, which he will be activating through his lawyers as the case moves along relative to this. All right. So I'm the case of witch hunt mm. doesn't mm. Uh, come in at all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sami Jenfi is the National Communications Officer of the NDC. This has been Top Story. Up next is Newsnight.